Hello, this is Raziel Cohen with ndftraining.com, and today we're going to talk about two different methods of how to carry in a suit. Now this video might be a little bit longer than the regular videos that we release, but this past week, if you follow us on Instagram, we had a really great discussion with a few different people. A few people messaged me and reached out to me asking about the video I posted, talking about different ways I, I wear a suit and how I carry in them. There are different methods you are able to use when you're wearing a suit, and today we're gonna to cover two of the most popular. One is very conventional, the other one is, is becoming more popular, but people might not be comfortable with it because they don't know the proper method of how to use it and how to wear it. So before we get into that, there's going to be a discussion about how and what we dress in. Even though we're wearing a suit, it doesn't mean that we're wearing a regular suit. We're going to wear things a little bit differently and dress a little bit differently in order to fit around the gun a little bit better. So for example, the suit I'm wearing right now, the pants that I'm wearing, are a little bit bigger than the regular size that I usually wear. That's because if I'm going to be carrying outside the waistband or even inside the waistband, but it might be bulking much more, it might be something we want to take into account in order to compensate for that. The other thing is that my pants is going to be, if you're going to be carrying inside the waistband, it's at least one size up for the same reason. If it's going to be inside my pants, I want to make sure to have that space because if it's tightly fit, then the gun might not fit there at all and that would obviously be a problem or it would be incredibly uh, uncomfortable and that might change the way we stand and walk and our posture that could kind of give something away. The other thing is that a lot of times suit pants might not have a lot of belt loops. If you're going to be wearing a suit and pants um, and they're dress pants, make sure that the pants you're getting has more belt loops than usual because usually it's also of a lighter material. It's not like denim or any kind of jean that will have a lot more rigidity to it. So you want to make sure to at least have more loops to be able to hold your belt a little bit better. So the pants I'm currently wearing has eight belt loops, which although it's not like it's making the, the actual pants stronger, it's giving them more of a chance that if something were to, to tear or rip, I would have at least still more control of the belt and the gun so I don't run into any issues. The other thing obviously is the belt. The belt you're wearing, you wanna make sure um, if you're going to be in a dressed up environment, you don't wanna wear a tactical belt because that could also give away too much about what you're trying to do and what you have um, hidden. So. Core Essentials is known to make really, really good dress belts. I'm sure there are other companies out there. I just happen to use Core Essentials, especially because they have the quick um, loosen and, and tighten system, which could be very comfortable depending on like the type of movements that you're using. So that might be something else you wanna take into consideration. The next thing we're going to talk about is the two different methods you're able to use when you're carrying a gun. The first method is outside the waistband. Outside the waistband, but it's going to be on the side of where you have your jacket, so you're still able to grab it uh, but it's still hidden by the jacket very well. So it's a little bit further back. It's not really at the three o'clock. It's kind of like three and a half, four o'clock almost where you'll be able to really be out of the way and in a way that you'll still be able to get it, but it can be hidden by the suit jacket. That's a big deal. Now, there are different holsters out there that will provide you that kind of, of, of setup. The one that I've used most often and I've seen work the best is from Rigger Arms. They have their holster called the Legendary Holster. It uses a pancake, pancake loop design where it really sticks much tighter to your body and could help guarantee a much, much closer fit so it won't bulge out as much as conventional holsters do. So if you're looking for an outside the waistband holster that's going to still fit tight to your body, that's probably the first place I'd check out. So let's do a couple drills with that setup and then we'll transition to the second setup which might be a little bit more complicated. So let's talk about the actual drill that's going to be a part of this video. There are two things you want to make sure about when you're clearing the gun to be able to grab your gun and make sure you have a proper draw. The first thing is that you want to make sure that you actually have enough grab of the the suit to be able to move the suit out of the way to be able to grab your firearm. Now, since a lot of suit jackets are very light, what some people do is that they'll open up the bottom of their suit jacket and they could put in some metal or magnets or something like something along those lines. So then when you grab it and you throw it, you have more weight going along with it. Another thing you could do is just put keys in your pocket. So by doing so, instead of it trying to be a full modification of the jacket, you can just have keys in your pocket and then when you throw it, again, it'll kind of make sure that the jacket swings out of the way so you get clearance of your gun. The next thing, which is a big deal, is that not just for a suit, if you're wearing any tight fitted jacket of any form, the issue you're going to have is that your conventional draw, if I start to draw, you'll immediately see how the back of my jacket gets very tight. My arms are getting tight, my bicep area is getting tight, and it's gonna be very difficult for me to get a full extension of the gun um, to be able to get a proper grip. So what's the resolution to that? What you wanna do is, when you're grabbing the gun, 
from outside the waistband, I usually end up doing two things at once. When I'm grabbing the jacket and pushing it out of the way, I start to curl my shoulders up a little bit. So I start doing a motion similar to this, where when I'm doing that, I'm bringing extra material up to where my shoulders are in order to have more, more area there where I can have more uh, motion in my shoulders. So when I'm grabbing the gun, my shoulders kind of curled up. And now when I pull out the gun, it got tighter in my back, but I have much more area that I could push out with my arms to be able to get a proper draw. So again, if I were to do it the conventional method where I'm standing like this and then I just draw and I do it straight out, I'm already really stuck right around this point. And it'll be very hard for me to go further and get a proper sight picture without ripping the jacket. Now, obviously, we wouldn't really care if the jacket rips, but we wanna be able to practice a method that we could use in every situation. So if you just practice a little bit of a curl in your shoulders when you're drawing the gun, you'll have much better results for, that, for what you're trying to do. The second method we're going to talk about is obviously less conventional because there is a lot of risk involved depending on the environment that you're in. Um, obviously, if you're, if you're a concealed carry holder, ideally we want to have as minimal as a profile as possible, kind of the gray man theory, where we're trying to reduce the likeliness that people are looking at us and for us to be able to notice that something's happening. Now, a big thing that we're going to try to work on is that you have to remember that unless someone's specifically looking for your firearm, it's usually something that's not looked for and it's not something that people are gonna be specifically watching out for. So me having a conversation with you right now, the way I'm talking and the way I'm engaging, usually your, your eyes are gonna be higher up than looking at someone's waistline, unless again, you have a reason to do so. So that's just something to take into account. Now, usually, depending on the holster that you use, it's very hard to carry um, tucked. So there are holsters that you could get that are tuckable holsters, but not all of them are great and you really have to make sure that you, you practice and use them to be able to see which one works for you best. The holster that I, I've been using that is a tuckable holster and that also works for the general way that I like to carry is the also from Rigor Arms, which is the PID, the Partner in Defense holster. They have a tuckable option. It uses a combination of two things. They use G-code uh, clips, which push the belt out, as well as also a wing, which pushes the, the belt, the, the holster back in. So you're really getting a lot of concealment out of it. Now, it could be something that you'd think is a very bad idea, but I'm actually wearing it right now and it's probably pretty hard to see that I'm carrying appendix. Now, the way it works is that you also have to be careful that using this method, you get your shirt completely clear. If your shirt isn't completely clear of the holster, then you're going to have a problem with actually drawing the gun. So, just like most dress shirts, dress shirts at the bottom are usually gonna have an opening where there, there, are, there isn't obviously two buttons at the bottom bottom. It might be a good idea if you're going to be tucked in to actually sew those parts together or put something together. Not that I have currently, but that might be a good idea simply because when you grab the shirt to be able to clear it and grab the gun, you wanna make sure that it's all moving up kind of like a t-shirt in one motion. If there's that split, there could be times that it might not be able to clear because it starts to move to the sides and you might not get a proper grip of the gun. So these are just things you wanna take into account if you decide you want to carry appendix tucked in with a suit. So these are two methods that I hope were able to benefit you a lot by understanding the value of each and the way that you should set yourself up for each. I understand this video is usually longer than the ones that we usually put out, but there was so much discussion, positive discussion from the previous post, I felt that it was important to be able to put this video out with as much information as possible to be able to help those who ask questions. If you have questions, if you have something you want us to do a video on, if you have a drill that you specifically want to see or a question that we might be able to implement into a drill, please leave a comment below, like this video so we can make sure to gain interaction with it. Our gun community is never gonna be promoted because people hate what we do, but this is something that will be valuable to be able to actually help save people by making sure we're putting out proper information that could actually be valuable to new shooters, which is very important. If you're looking for online training, we just released an online training program, which if you're not able to go to the range, ammunition is too expensive or anything like that, you could check that out and be able to train in the comfort of your own home and be able to gain a lot from those videos. So that might be something you wanna check out as well. This is Raziel Cohen with ndftraining.com. Thank you for watching.